So hi there everybody and welcome back to my channel. You have tuned in to my little mini series to make Ollie the Autumn Owl. I've broken this series down into three. You are now watching part one. I have put the links to the other two parts down in that description box below. So to start with, we're just going to make up Ollie's body here. So if you have a look, I've made one up in advance. I'm going to show you how to crochet up his bottom here. Then he's ridged so that he will sit up nicely. Then I will give you the stitch count up. What I'll do once we start, because you'll just keep repeating the same row, I'm going to change colour so that you can see how I do it. And then I will leave you to go up the rest of his body. And then what we'll do is we'll simply just seam him up. So I'm using a DK weight yarn. You're going to need some sort of either toy filling or this is just the inside of an old cushion that I have. So I'm using that to fill my owls. In the actual tutorial, I'm going to be using a four millimeter hook so that you can see the stitches are slightly larger. But when I actually made the owl myself, I went down a hook size. OK, so his body and in my original original owl are using a 3.5 millimeter. I would suggest that you do this so that you make your sort of fabric nice and tight. You don't want to see the stuffing come through. But just for the purposes of this tutorial so that you can see my stitches a little easier, let's use a four. You will also need a pair of scissors for your ends. We're going to start by working in the magic circle or magic ring, whatever you call it. This is how I start mine off. I have my tail end at the front, working yarn at the back. I simply wrap around two fingers. I go under with my hook, grab that yarn, pull it through. And then I gently take my fingers out making sure I have hold of my working yarn, not my tail. I then simply chain to secure. I'm then going to pull my tail out. I know that this is the magic circle. When I pull on my tail end, you can see that circle closes. So we've chained one up to secure. We're not going to count this within our stitch count. OK, so now we're just going to ignore this one. In this magic circle, we are going to put eight UK doubles. So that's eight US singles. So just as a recap, a UK double is just push hook through. There's no yarn over. Grab that yarn, pull through. We've got one, two loops. Grab the yarn, pull through. So that's one UK double. We need to put a further seven in here. So that's two, three, four, five. Six, seven, and eight. Now before I join, I'm going to pull on that original tail end. And you can see that that's closed up nicely. So now we're going to join in your first stitch. So ignoring our chain one up. In the first stitch, we're going to slip stitch. So that's through and the one that's on your hook. And you should have, if you count around, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that one we've just slip stitched, which is eight stitches. 
So for round two, we're going to chain one up just for height. We're now going to ignore that in our stitch count. In the first stitch, we're going to put two UK doubles. So in that same stitch, we're going to put two. In the next stitch around, we're going to put two. So that's one and two. So now when we put two stitches in a stitch, I'm going to call that an increase. So in each stitch going around, we're going to increase. So that's two stitches in each stitch all the way around. We should end up with 16 stitches. So after round two, I've checked back. I have 16 stitches, ignoring the chain one up in that first stitch. I'm just going to slip stitch. So that's pulling through and the one that's on your hook. So for round three, we're going to start again, chain one up. We're now ignoring that. In the first stitch, I'm just going to put one double crochet. In the next stitch, I'm going to increase. So that's two double crochet. In the next stitch, I'm going to put one. In the next stitch, whoops, <laughs> I'm going to increase. So that's two. And then all the way around round three, you're going to put one stitch, increase, one stitch, increase. When you get back, you should have 24 stitches. I'm at the end of round three. I've checked back. I have 24 stitches. In that first stitch, ignoring the chain one up, I'm going to simply slip stitch to join. Now, round four is the last time that we're going to increase. We're going to chain one up. We're going to, in that first stitch, do one double. In the next stitch, we're going to put one double. In the next stitch, we're going to increase. So that's two. Okay, in the next two, we're going to put one double in the third stitch, increase. In the next two, one double in the third, increase. All the way around, so it's two singles and then an increase. At the end, you should have 32 stitches. So I've checked back, I have 32 stitches at the end of row four. What we're going to do now is join slightly differently. So ignoring our chain one up, if I get my needle, I'm going to slip stitch in that first stitch. Normally we go under both of those loops. What we're going to do is slip stitch in the back loop only. OK, and all the way around round five, we're going to be working in those back loops. So you're not going under the whole stitch. You're just doing the back loop. OK, so I'm just going to slip stitch to join. I'm going to chain one up in that same stitch, still working in the back loop, just one double crochet. And then all the way around, I'm just putting one double crochet in each stitch, working in those back loops. Okay, and after you've done a few, you will see you have a ridge forming. If I show you on this, you have this line around here forming, which means that your owl is going to 
sit up nicely. So carry on around, you will still have 32 stitches at the end of round 5. And then when you've finished, we're going to slip stitch in the whole stitch of that um, first stitch of round five. But in round five, you worked in the back loops only all the way around. Now we're going to be working in the full stitch, so going under both loops in the rest of his body. For row six, we're just going to chain one up. In that first stitch, we're going to put one double crochet and then just one double in each stitch around. And you're still going to have 32 stitches at the end of round six and at the end of each round now until we've finished his body. So at the end of round six, I still have 32 stitches, but you can see if you have your work facing you, you can just start to see now that you can, he looks a little bit like a bowl. So he's already shaping upwards. I'm going to do another couple of rows around. Okay, and then I'm going to show you how to change colour. So what I want to do first, ignoring that chain one up, we join. OK, and then for round seven, we're going to do exactly the same. So chain one up, one double in that first stitch and one double all the way around. I'm then going to join, chain one up, one double in every stitch around. So I'll join you at the end of round eight. I will still have 32 stitches in the round and then I'm going to show you how to change colour. So I've come to the end of round eight. I'm going to slip stitch, but I want to change colour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push through as if I was slip stitching, but I'm going to drop my brown yarn. My next colour is this red, so I have a loop and I'm going to finish the slip stitch by using the red. So pull through that stitch and the one that's on your hook. I will tighten up using my working yarn. We can tighten the other bit in just one moment. I'm going to chain one up to secure. Then I'm going to carry on with my red. So round nine, I start. I've done my chain up. I'm putting in my double and then all the way around. I'll be putting my double crochet. So if I do a few stitches, we we'll then go back and tighten up. So I'm starting round nine and I've changed colour nicely. So I'm just going to go back where I added my red. I will now just cut this brown off. <clears throat> OK, and then I'm going to tie those ends together, just tightening anything up that maybe you've got a loose stitch there where we joined. OK, I'm going to do a nice double knot, maybe even a treble because we're not going to weave in our ends. These ends are going to be on the inside. So you don't have to weave them in. So if you don't like weaving in, you'll like that. I'm just going to snip them off a bit shorter and then you can tuck those ends in as we go. But just quite a nice um, even change there. This is your chain one up. So when you come round on your last stitch, you're going to ignore that and join again in the first proper stitch of your red round.
OK, so I'm going to carry on around round nine. Um, and then I'll join and then I'm going to leave you to just crochet up the rest of his body. I'm going to give you your um, row count. I will show you on the um, this body here that I've done where I changed colour. So you would change colour in the same way. But obviously you don't need to cha change colour if you don't want to. You can change colour and have a real stripy owl or you can just have a plain owl. It's entirely up to you. But when I get to the end of round nine, I will just give you those row counts. But each round should end with 32 stitches. So I'm finishing round nine. There's my chain one up that I'm ignoring and I'm just slip stitching to join. OK, I'm going to do in total 20 rounds and you can change colour whenever you like. Um, but what you will do each round will be chain one up, one double in that first stitch and then 32 all the way around. OK. So it's going to be 20 rounds. What I did in um, my example, so I did four rounds out. I did that um, round five when we sort of put in this ridge here. I did a further five rounds up. Then with the red, I did another five. Then with the orange, I did another five. OK, so in total, we have 20 rounds. But as I say, it's entirely up to you. You could change colour each round if you wanted. We don't have the ends to sew in or you could use a colour change yarn or just a plain yarn. It's entirely up to you. So at the end of your 20th round, I will join you. So I finished my round 20. I have changed back to the three and a half millimetre hook because, as I said at the beginning, this piece I made up with the three and a half millimetre hook. OK, now you can see that we have a bit of a seam here. So I want this to be at the back of my owl. I don't want this to be at the front. So but what we do if I show you on my original, we sort of squash him flat here and then crochet across. So I really want to be over here and then turn and crochet across. So as we have 32 stitches, if my math serves me correctly, if I slip stitch just across in the next eight stitches, I should bring you over to this stitch here. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm not chaining one up. I'm just getting over to that edge and I'm going to simply slip stitch. So this is just a way of sort of traveling across your crochet without actually adding stitches. So three, Okay, I'm just going to pull a loop up and just show you. This is the seam at the back, but we have travelled over to here. Now, before I go and join across the top, I'm going to start by stuffing maybe up to sort of like the top of um, the second stripe with our toy stuffing. So you can stuff as plump or as skinny as you'd like your owl. I think owls look a little bit nicer if they're a little bit chubby. <laughs> so just stuff your owl. Also, don't push too much in down the bottom. You do want him to be able to stand up. So just 
mainly his tummy and his side. So I might take a little bit out for the moment. We can, once we've stitched across here, you can poke some more in before we completely stitch him up. Okay, so he needs to be able to stand up on his own. Now, if you feel happier whilst you're doing that, you can put a stitch marker in this loop. But I'm just going to put my hook back on that loop. Now we're simply going to double crochet him together. So if I show you on one of these stitches in the middle, which are easier to see, what you're going to do is catch two loops of the front, two loops of the back. OK, so if you can see my needle going through, we're just going to match up our stitches front and back. Now, if you do find this very confusing, you could just take a darning needle and then you could sew, do an overstitch. That would work just as well. What we want to do is secure him at the top so that no stuffing can come out. I'm just going to simply chain one up with my first stitch at the front and the first stitch at the back. Because we've slip stitched, these first stitches will seem tight. So you can help things along with a darning needle. We're just simply going to double crochet. Second stitch, second stitch at the back, another double crochet. We're going to do this all the way along. So catching a stitch on the front, stitch on the back. You should be able to match up 16 across. If it's not exactly, don't worry, as long as it's nice and neat across the top. So I've got my stitch at the front, stitch at the back, and I'm just doing double crochet. Again, stitch at the front, stitch at the back, double crochet. So you're just joining along the top of his head. Now, as I say, because we slip stitch, these, just these few will be tighter. Once you get up here, you don't have that problem. So see how you go. I won't completely finish, I'm going to wait and then I'm maybe just going to poke a little bit more stuffing in. So it's catching the stitch at the front, stitch at the back. And then you can see you have this lovely ridge going along. And I think that makes quite a nice sort of point here for his ear. So before you completely closing up, if you feel like you need to add some more stuffing, making sure that he can sit up on his own. You don't want him to have too much of a round bottom. Um, I'm quite happy. So you can always use your hook just to sort of shove your stuffing in. I've poked a little bit more up this end so it gives a nice shape. Um, I'm quite happy. So I'm just going to put my hook back in that loop and I will carry on joining him at the top. So I have two last stitches that are sort of going around the corner. So as best I can, I'm joining those two together. Then I'm simply going to just chain one up, cut my yarn, and then I'm going to pull that tight. And then um, I'm just going to leave the tail end it's going to become part of his little ear here. So there you have, I'm just going to squatch him about a little bit. 
there you have your owl body. So next time I'm going to be showing you how to make his eyes and his wings.